All right, let's take a closer look at this unit. Our front panel here is made out of glass. We have a aluminum case. We have some warnings on here. Here's the back and here's our information plate. See, it's 7.4 pounds. Serial number 95. Looks like we have one mod here. We have two large connectors here. You can see that we're missing some screws on the bottom, which is not always a good sign. Hopefully it's got all its parts. All right, to get this apart, we need to take out a few of these screws on the back and the six screws on the top and the two screws on the bottom. All right, now I should be able to just slide this cover off and reveal what's on the inside. Here's our cover here. It's a rather thick piece of aluminum. Here's this side. We'll take a closer look at it in a minute. We have a circuit board on the top. And on this side, we have some nice connectors and a fully populated board here. And here's the back side. You can see this is where the wiring harnesses are. We have some other mechanical stuff here that we'll take a closer look at. Unfortunately, we are missing some parts on this unit. You can see these sockets on the front here. There would be small little PCB cards that would plug in here that have a seven segment display on it. That way you can get the distance indicator here. And it looks like we're even missing one of the sockets here. On the circuit board, we have lots of Texas Instruments logic chips. These would be doing various calculations and probably running the seven segment displays up here. All these chips here with the metal top are ceramic chips. We do have two epoxy chips here. You can see that the screws that were on this case actually screwed into this metal bracket here. We also have various other components on this board. Looks like we have a connector back here that plugs into the back of this board. On the top here you can see the bracket that the six screws on the outer case went into. In the middle here we have these two devices which I believe are called gavinometers. It is a electromechanical device that uses a magnet and a coil of a wire to move the needle. The one on the left here is a heading warning indicator and the one on the right indicates whether you're using true north or magnetic north. All right now after the removal of these two screws we can unconnect this piece here. All right, here's the removed PCB. Here's the connector on the back. This is what we have on the back. Not much. You can see this does have a conformal coating on it. We have a part number here. We have a date of June 18th, 1986. And it looks like that's about it on the back. Here's what's underneath that board. You can see we have a whole bunch of point to point wiring. So there's gonna be some components on the other side. We have some screws here holding it down. You're also missing two screws, unfortunately. We have a connector here connecting it to the main wiring harness. We have some more screws on the back going into that board. So let's take this off. All right, I've lifted this board off. To undo this connector, we have two screws here that we have to take out. And then I should be able to disconnect it. So here's the back side. We have mostly point to point wiring here. We have some small ferrite beads here on wires. We have some capacitors here and here. And over here we have some test points. Here's the back side. We have lots of those potted modules that I sometimes see in Collins avionics. We have some Passive components over here, we have two transistors and some other passives. We have some electrolytic capacitors here. We have two transistors down here. And then here's the potted modules. Looks like we have a lot of different kind of drivers here. We have air amplifiers, different voltage drivers, and we have some more passive components over here but that's about it for this board. All right, the next step to getting this apart is to remove these aluminum rods here. 
we have two of them on this side and two on the other side. They're held on by screws on this side and on the back. Okay, after I've taken those rods off, you can see this back piece here can come away from the assembly. All right, now that the back cover here has been unscrewed from the circuit board assembly, I should be able to just lift this assembly up off of the rest of it. It is connected to the rest of the chassis here with a wiring harness. To undo this connector, I have to take out these two screws here on the bottom of the connector and I should be able to take the circuit board assembly off. All right, here's the board assembly. Now let's take a closer look at it. Here's our connector and wiring harness. You can see that it goes along all three of these boards here. Over here, this board is not completely populated. We have some passive components here. We have two potted modules here. This one here is a phase detector and this one is a servo amplifier. So I'm guessing this board is for driving the servos and motors that is used in this unit. We also have some test points up here. Here's the back side of the board. You can see we have two power transistors here. We have our point-to-point -point wiring here. We have a few resistors, a few more resistors here. Here's the second board. We have some transistors here and some more potted modules. We have several monitors here of different kinds. We have a 20 volt DC driver. Here we have an air amp. I can't tell what this one is, but I'm guessing it's another air amp. We have two switch modules down here. Here's the underneath side of the middle board. You can see our main wiring harness going across. We have some more passive components here. We have a capacitor here and a few more resistors there. Here's the third board. This one looks pretty much identical to the layout of this one, but it's just fully populated. We have two phase detector modules here and we have two servo amplifier modules. Here we can see the back side of some power transistors. Here, here, and here, and here. Here we have some more capacitors and resistors here. Here's the back side of that board. Here's our power transistors here and here. And the other two are over here. There's our wiring harness going down here to this connector. We have some more resistors here. We have a strange black cylinder component here in this little clamp can pull it off here. It's just this little black cylinder here with three wires going to it. I'm not exactly sure what this is. So that's about it for this board module here. Now let's take a look at this other stuff here. Here's the back side of the connectors. You can see our wiring harnesses here. Up here is the harness that went to the circuit board. We have another small board here which I'm going to remove. On this board we have two big resistors and four capacitors. On the other side we have two more big resistors. And that's it. Alright, back to the main assembly. It looks like we have some large black potted modules here. I believe these are potted transformers. This larger potted transformer is from a brand called Torotel. And the smaller one doesn't have any markings on it. It looks like the next thing to come off is this aluminum plate here. It looks like there are four screws holding it on to the rest of the chassis. We have four more large screws here going to the galvanometer. But I'm going to leave those in so we can just take this whole piece off. Alright, so we've got this metal plate here removed. Here's our galvanometer for the glide slope indicator. You can see that the galvanometer is a lot bigger than the ones, for example, over here that move these little flags here. I think that's because this one here is a lot more precise because it's for a, such an important indication. On the back of here, you can see we have some rotary contacts that go to the middle shaft here. All right, so here we have two synchros. These ones are made by Sunbeam. We also have two more synchros over here. This one has a blue top on it. 
All right, now that we've seen under this plate, I'm gonna put it back on so we don't damage any other components. Here's the glide slope needle here. This indicator here shows whether you're too high above the glide slope or too low below the glide slope or if you're right on it. I also have another small flag here that's moved by this galvanometer. You can see this is a glide slope flag. You can see it comes out and it tucks away behind the face plate there. I also think it's pretty cool that they added these tiny little screw-on counterweights to the back of the needle so it's balanced just right. You can see they have these little pieces here to keep it from moving too far to the left or right. Okay, here's the other side here. Over here we have those two synchros that we saw earlier. And right here I believe we have a small stepper motor. This small motor here turns this gear which turns this middle piece here. And that rotates the compass card here on the front. Here we have another gear. This moves this whole inner assembly here. This assembly here is made up of the course indicating arrow, which is this piece here, and then the lateral deviation bar, which is this middle bar here. And that is all rotated by this gear here. You can see in here, this whole middle assembly rotates. In here we can see the gavinometer for the lateral deviation bar. If we turn it, there's a little bit of wiring in here. Here's the back side of it. And that's pretty much all we can see. There must be another one inside here for that warning flag, but I can't see it. Alright, so let's take a look at the next side here. You can see there's a lot going on here. Here we can see there's a few components mounted on this little aluminum piece here. You can see here we have this little box here with some wires going into it. This contains two bulbs here that lights up the alert indicator. In the middle here we have another gav gavinometer. This one actuates this little panel here which switches between 1, 2, and 3. On the top here we have another gavinometer. This one here moves this little flag. This flag here changes between INS which stands for Internal Navigation System and RAD, which stands for radar. All right, here's the top of the unit again. There's a few things here we didn't look at before. We have two, we have two stepper motors hidden here and here. You can kind of see them down there. And under here, we have a small gear, which actuates this frontmost gear here. And that moves our heading selection indicator. So when the pilots dial in their heading, this will move and show the approximate heading. Right here we have a small stationary needle called the lubber line. This one defines the aircraft's longitudinal axis. Over here we can see two wires going to the front glass panel. Underneath these metal pieces here are small light bulbs that illuminate this glass panel. You can see there are tiny little wires going from each one. You can see here that the glass panel is actually angled downwards. I believe that is so it lights this panel evenly. Alright, so that's about it for this extremely expensive and complex instrument. Hope you guys learned something and thanks for watching.